Welcome to the first lesson of, uh, of this programming course. Uh, the first thing uh, w that uh, we are going to do is uh, I am going to introduce myself. I am going to uh, show uh, my experience and uh, what, I, uh, what you can ask uh, from me uh, in the sense of uh, what kind of ga games I have experience uh, developing. For example, um, well, mainly I am a, a senior game programmer and my main experience was from 2005 to 2008, I, I was developing uh, uh, Java micro edition games. I don't know if uh, you recall, uh, but before uh, all the smartphone uh, gaming, there was uh, games, the games were developing in Java. And it was, it was a really interesting time to be a, a game developer because mm, the the games uh, were not meant to be uh, like they are right now uh, in in the sense that they are service uh, services right now but uh, they are they were meant to be just uh, as traditional games a product that uh, your goal uh, was to make it as fun as possible and uh, that was it the the customer was able to purchase the game and was able to enjoy the game like any traditional game and uh, yes i i was able to uh, do multiple uh, game genres from uh, platforms to uh, this football game soccer game and uh, even some game uh, well some uh, shooter game it was a, an interesting time to to be a, a game developer okay the next stage uh, was uh, the flash uh, flash game development in this in this uh, in this period of time i was able to develop uh, plenty of uh, of uh, java of sorry of flash games and uh, mm, it was a, a, a really uh, creative period of of my of my life where i was able not only to work for for customers like in this case that it's uh, a game that i made for for a customer that was heavily inspired by by angry birds but it was also a period of time where i was able to develop uh, my own uh, productions uh, explore uh, crazy ideas and uh, being able to make it uh, make it them uh, viral for example this one is uh, called zombie baseball and it it became uh, quite uh, quite viral viral with uh, more than uh, 30 million of of views in a period of of one year of course uh, my period of working in flash uh, well ended uh, making uh, making gambling games uh, it was also interesting an interesting experience to to do and finally uh, the period that uh, i am just right now is the period of uh, developing uh, not only games but any kind of application in 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 unity first i started do, uh, doing doing um, single player experiences okay this is an a game i made uh, that uh, was uh, heavily inspired by stealth games like um, uh, Metal Gear Solid, at, at least the, the, f the PlayStation 1, and uh, also uh, some elements uh, related to uh, RPGs, in a special a game that it's called Alundra, also for, uh, for PlayStation 1. And uh, yes, I, I was able to make uh, this game. This was uh, very, uh, very challenging and, and really rewarding. And uh, what else? Um, this game is also a single player experience that, uh, well, uh, in this case, I, uh, I wanted to, to practice, to, to explore uh, the virtual reality. And I made uh, this this game the, where the goal of of this game was your conscience was closed in a in a digital prison, and uh, your goal was to, to escape from from that uh, digital prison. And uh, it it was uh, this kind of games that uh, very similar to the ones that you get uh, right now in in uh, roguelite uh, kind of games that you. 
uh, made some progress, you get uh, mm, coins, you get uh, mm, collectibles, and uh, you can use these coins, these experience points to upgrade your character and go further and further and further. It was a it was a neat uh, neat experience, and uh, it's already there in in the app lab in case that you want to 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 enjoy it. Also, I made uh, some some silly games. For example, in the style that uh, were popular in 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 Flash, in particular, this uh, this game combined uh, both. Uh, the craziness of uh, of killing zombies and bowling so it was a kind of crazy idea of, uh, at least that i wanted to 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 develop and uh, well in uh, after that i i started to, uh, with uh, multiplayer uh, multi-platform development that means that uh, I was able to develop um, projects that uh, were able to be deployed both in in mobile and in uh, in VR and also in multiplayer form. So you can have uh, players running on on VR and players running on 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 mobile the games uh, and uh, they were enjoying the the same experience toge together but using different uh, interfaces, different inputs. This, uh, this game that uh, you can see right here is uh, it's, a, it's kind of experience that I made in order for, for um, to showcase the possibilities of uh, educational that uh, could have these, these projects. Uh, that uh, you can uh, have multiple people mul in, in this case you can have a teacher and multiple students uh, sharing the same space and the teacher uh, showing uh, how you can construct or how you can recreate uh, different historical periods of time you can know a little bit more about me uh, by accessing to my uh, to my personal website where are uh, showcased uh, some of the projects that I have uh, um, recently done related to uh, multi-platform development, uh, multiplayer development, virtual reality, augmented reality. There are multiple uh, projects shown uh, in, in this website. And also uh, there is uh, this other website that it's related to a project that, that uh, um, that it's about uh, bringing uh, multiplayer uh, six degrees of freedom uh, experiences to directly to the people okay so um, the goal of this project is uh, well uh, you know in this kind of uh, events related to the uh, to the to the anime to the comic to the to the video games uh, in this kind of events uh, um, we ask if we can perform um, our uh, our our project and uh, if we are allowed uh, to perform the, our project uh, we bring uh, we bring it there and uh, we offer to the people for free so they can enjoy uh, experiencing uh, virtual reality in a way that they cannot uh, really do it in in their uh, in their own homes okay um, the last, uh, if you want to contact with me, you can access both uh, in Slack and Discord uh, through these email addresses. So we are going to start uh, the lesson uh, with the Unity introduction. Okay, so mm, what is uh, Unity 3D? Unity 3D is uh, a game development engine that uh, at least uh, the free version is free to free to use free to download and and free to be able to create um, a wide range of uh, game and, and applications without having to uh, to pay uh, it, it also has a pro version uh, a paid version that um, includes uh, a lot of more uh, functionality but um, for many many projects that um, you you would be involved uh, it would be um, enough with with the free version 
Is it possible that uh, if you land in uh, somehow a big uh, or average uh, size studio, uh, you could deal with uh, the provision? But uh, for the smaller, uh, more smaller projects or uh, just uh, non-gaming uh, related projects with the uh, with the free version, you are you are good to go. So, what what are the advantages of of Unity? Uh, first of all it's uh, really easy to to learn there are there, uh, there are plenty of of tutorials examples uh, the documentation is is good uh, it's uh, this 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 particular area is pretty pretty strong for for unity also it has a huge community um right now maybe it's uh, it's the leading uh, top leading engine in in that, in that sense uh, but uh, there are of course other other uh, game engines but they are not uh, as strong as as you need at least for for the 3d uh, development maybe in 2d uh, there are other options that are um, way better than than unity than uh, can be a better option than, than than unity in order to develop to the games uh what else uh multi-platform it's uh it, it it gives you um plenty of tools to be able to develop uh for multiple platforms for a desktop for mobile for browser for virtual reality for augmented reality uh, for uh, for game systems like uh, playstation uh, xbox and uh, yes it, it has uh, plenty of uh, it supports plenty of platforms uh, another area that uh, excels uh, is the the range of uh, of business areas that uh, you can target um, in in this particular uh, sense uh, i have been able to uh, to develop uh, projects related uh, with uh, with robotics uh, with with edu education uh, even with uh, the software the blockchain I, I have been able to um, ex uh, to develop uh, to uh, get experience in in that in that particular fields another uh, advantage is that uh, it allows quite a fast uh, development time for small and, and medium projects but uh, this is a double-edged uh, sword uh, that we are going to see why uh, in the next point uh, the disadvantages and um, since it's so easy to um, to do things uh, it's also easy to find uh, pretty messy things uh, in the sense that uh, um, maybe uh, the person who is behind the project uh, I, is just starting and he begins to throw everything on the scene and uh, eventually it uh, it creates a mess and if the project needs to uh, grow bigger and, and, and bigger this is going to be a huge huge problem it's what we know uh, in the in the programming terminolo terminology as spaghetti code it's uh, just a code a project that it's it's a nightmare to understand and and, and uh, navigate through uh, another disadvantage is that uh, it has uh, worse performance than other solutions like uh, like unreal for example uh, maybe uh, if you are not dealing with a high uh, high production uh, project um, some triple a uh, project maybe this is uh, this is not a big deal for for you at least it, it has not been a big deal for me uh, at least because i haven't uh, had to deal with huge uh, huge huge projects so uh, what we are going to do first is uh, we are going to download uh, what it's called the unity hub um, you will find that uh, when you work in in a company it's usual that uh, uh, when you are dealing with uh, multiple projects that each project has uh, is used in a different version of of unity to deal with that to deal with uh, different uh, unity versions uh, and, in the, uh, and different projects we have uh, the unity hub okay 
and uh, we are going to proceed to to download the the unity hat so we access to uh, this website we download the unity hub and we would proceed to install and run it so we have started the unity hub okay and uh, we are going to describe fast uh, what's going on here okay so you have this section here that uh, the most important ones are projects where uh, you will have all the projects you are working with okay and you will only need to mm, just click uh, to load uh, any project and the other part uh, the important one is the instance here you will have uh, all the different unity uh, sdks that uh, that are currently installed in this in this computer and uh, you can use uh, any of the available installed uh, SDKs just to open to work with with the different projects uh, as you can see here I have uh, many projects with uh, unity 2020 but some projects with uh, even um, versions from uh, years years ago okay so uh, what we are going to do uh, right now is uh, we are going to uh, make sure that we are uh, we are uh, working with uh, the latest LTS version of Unity. LTS version is the current stable supported uh, version. It's a version that it's uh, supported to the long term. Uh, it's uh, recommended uh, always to use this version because the, that, that in that sense uh, you make sure that uh, it's the more stable uh, one. Okay, so in order to in order to uh, install uh, the version we we need, we go to the installs and we press add. And uh, in my case, it's disabled, but in your case, uh, it would be enabled. Uh, you uh, would be able to click on the recommended release that would be 2021, um, the one that uh, when you watch this video uh, would be the LT. Is, uh, version and you would be, you would press next okay uh, I am going to do halfway uh, with this uh, in order to show you and and when uh, when you reach this this section you have to choose just to make sure that you have uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Community Edition that it's the well it's the framework uh, that uh, will help you out uh, to develop games and uh, also mm, since uh, we are going to work in the future with uh, both with both mobile and with VR uh, headsets uh, we need the android will support because uh, most uh, all the VR headsets right now are supported uh, are android uh, based so we are going to to need that once these two uh, have been selected, you can proceed uh, to press next and the installation process will, will begin. I am not going to do it because mm, right now I, I am not going to install another one. And uh, this 2022 version is still too, too beta for me to, to try out. Uh, so mm, just go ahead, install it and uh, come back uh, when when you got it uh, fully installed okay now we are going to uh, create a, a new project okay uh, in order to create a new project uh, if you have a multiple uh, unity uh, SDKs installed if you press here you will able uh, to see all the unity uh, available and we are interested uh, to uh, to create a unity project in the version that uh, we have just uh, recently installed so we are going to choose the version we are going to choose a location for for the project this one is fine for me and we are going to uh, use an, a name for the project my first project and we are going to create the project okay we have now opened the the, the project and we are going to uh, review uh, the current layout uh, what's going on uh, here what what do we have here 
So let's uh, start for, with uh, the hierarchy. Okay, the hierarchy tab. You uh, you can find it here. The hierarchy tab uh, contains the current uh, scenes uh, that uh, are um, you are working on. Um, the, the, the scene is uh, just the, the element where you are going to place all the logic, all the game objects, or everything that is going to run in, in, in your application or game. Okay, right now we only have two things, uh, just a camera and, and, and a light, nothing else. Okay. Okay, more. Uh, the next tab uh, we are going to explore is uh, the tab, the scene tab. Okay, we are going to explore the scene. The scene is the, this uh, this whole tab, and here you will be able to place um, all the all the elements that you need, um, uh, the characters, the everything. You will have it uh, right here, yeah, and you will be able to move it, to scale it, to rotate it uh, in any way you you want. Okay, the next tab uh, we are going to explore is the tab game. Okay, the tab game uh, is the tab uh, that uh, it will be uh, switched uh, um, when you press play. Okay, and it's the game. It's just the game running. It's it's just the game running. So, for example, if if you, if you press play button right uh, right here. It switches automatically to to the to the tab game, and uh, right now it's just running the game. It's running what it's in this in this scene, and in this scene, since there is nothing, there is only the camera and, and a directional light. It's showing just the the empty sky and, and nothing else. Okay, another another critical uh, panel uh, would be the the inspector. The inspector um, um, gives you all the necessary information about any object you are selecting. For example, uh, if you select the main camera, you will find all the properties that the, the, the camera has. Uh, it has uh, multiple components that uh, we will uh, see um, later in, in, the, in the course. Uh, if we select the directional light, it will have also components related to the directional light. Another critical component would be a project. In project, it's uh, the folder structure uh, of your of your project. And let's move uh, this right here, okay? Because I I prefer this this layout right here. It's easy for me to to navigate, and uh, right here you will be able to create your your own folders, your own structure, uh, in order to well to create your your own game. And uh, here you will be able to place your scripts. You will be able to create the folder structure you want. Uh, in in the in in the explorer, if you show the explorer. You will see just this structure, the files, everything. Okay. Finally, another another important uh, tab that it's important to know is the tab of console. In the console, uh, it will be, it will be displayed any kind of uh, log message. There are three types of log message. There is the type of information, there is the the type of warning, and there is the type of error. Uh, with these three types, you will be able to uh, debug uh, your your application and uh, well, just to make it make it work. Uh, as I said, uh, we are going to start uh, by example, and the first thing what uh, we are going to do it's uh, we are going to start with the, by the hierarchy tab, and we are going to create a three D object. Okay, so left uh, left click on the mouse create 3D object and we are going to select a cube because we are going to apply a rotation uh, to, to that cube. Don't select the sphere because it's harder to see if if a sphere is, is rotating. If we select the cube uh, with double click, okay, the camera is centered on the cube and we can see in the inspector all the properties that the cube has. 
okay let's let's review a little bit uh, all the all the components that the cube has uh, for example uh, there is the component transform that this uh, sets uh, the position the rotation and the scale of this object in the world there is the there is the component mesh uh, renderer that uh, it, it's uh, just um, the the mesh it's uh, the render uh, part of the of the object uh, if you disable just disappears uh, you can enable and disable all the components just by clicking in in this in this flag okay and the box collider the box collider uh, it helps uh, in, in with the collisions the box collider uh, has uh, the size if if we select edit collider you will be able to see that we can edit the the collision okay anyway any way we want we can edit the collision and we are going to revert to the initial state okay uh, also right here mm, are options for for navigation if you press uh, the, uh, the button alt and move with the mouse you would be able to move around and just to see uh, your selected object from different possible angles okay just with alt mouse you can rotate the whole thing if you select the hand here you will be able to move around okay good okay um uh, finally uh, well uh, we have created a cube in the scene uh, let's let's play let's play it uh, we are going to save it Control s or uh, select here and save a scene and if we play the whole thing okay we have a cube maybe the, uh, we have the cube uh, in not visible by the camera and uh, we are going to move the, the cube to move the cube we have this option right here okay we are going to move the cube in front of the camera and we have these three axes the axis here sorry this is the camera the axis here moves this way the axis here move that way and the other axis move this other way we are interested to put uh, this object in front of the camera so we can see it just we are going to check where is the camera okay we have to move the, the whole cube just forward for example if uh, another, another interesting possibility to know what's going on we can put the whole the whole two okay this this uh, this configuration can be uh, useful if you have a big a big screen okay or you reorganize uh, the, the whole thing in in a way that is more comfortable to you so right right here we can see how it would it would look uh, in in this uh, in running time so right now we we are placing right here and when we have the position we we want we, we just save play uh, press the play button nothing is going to change but right now it's the game is running the game is running right if uh, for example if we restored the initial the initial configuration the initial layout and uh, we are we are on a scene and we press play you will be able to see that we are switching to the the tab game and we are able to see the cube okay so right now um what i what i would like uh, uh, for, from you to do is just to reorganize uh, the layout uh, in the way you want okay uh, you are free you are free to do it uh, just choose uh, the layout you want uh, move uh, move the the tabs around uh, just choose what you want for 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 the layout so go ahead okay let's continue by selecting the camera okay and it will have appeared a tiny window on the bottom uh, right corner on the screen that is showing what the camera is uh, seeing right now uh, 
uh, if you select, uh, since uh, we have selected the camera, if we move the camera, you can see that, uh, well, um, in the in the tiny window the the cube is moving but it's uh, it's the opposite uh, it's uh, it's uh, the camera the one who is moving okay so you are able to move uh, freely the camera also you have the option with uh, this uh, this uh, tool right here the rotate tool you have the option to rotate the camera but uh, you will see that there are several uh, lines right here that uh, allow you to um, rotate the camera in the different axes for example if we press right here we are uh, going to rotate it in the x-axis uh, this would be the the, uh, the z-axis and this would be the e-axis okay uh, checking the properties of the camera if you go to the to the inspector you will see these properties in the camera flux if you press right here you will see uh, all these options for the moment we are going to uh, just uh, check these two a skybox and solid color a skybox you will be able to place a uh, an image that it will uh, it will represent your your sky and solid color, if you right now change uh, from the skybox to solid color, you uh, will uh, will see that if you have, uh, well, you still are selecting the camera, in the tiny window, everything has changed to blue. Is that solid color means that, uh, well, the background is going to be a solid color. And you can choose what kind of sol of color you do you want uh, for, for that background okay for the moment let's uh, revert until a, a skybox okay another another uh, useful um, property for of the camera would be the the clipping planes the clipping planes represent um, the area uh, that uh, is uh, is going to be able to see the camera so, so mm, the camera would be able to see just uh, consider uh, for example uh, 0.3 just like uh, centimeters and this would be uh, um, just the 30 percent of one centimeter just in front of your your eyes that uh, in that in that distance you will you won't be able to see anything for example uh, i don't know if i can make it with the cube but if i place the cube extremely close to the camera to the point that he, he, uh, the camera won't be able to see it or mm, better let's make it like this way right now uh, I am able to watch the cube but if I place a different value here let's let's play around with exactly with five right now uh, in the screen you see you see this uh, this kind of a square this is the the, um, the beginning from what the camera is uh, able to look forward the camera right now cannot see the the cube because uh, the starting position about uh, what is looking forward it's it's not inside so let's uh, going to revert to a previous value and we are uh, recovering the the view of of the cube let's move a little bit the cube okay Let's go back to the console tab and let's see what else uh, does it offer. We have this button here that uh, will allow to clear all the log messages of, uh, that will be displayed here. There is this uh, toggle that you can uh, just uh, activate or deactivate that will group uh, all the messages uh, that are the same in just one entry. Uh, this would be especially useful uh, and we will see an example later this other toggle error uh, on pause that uh, will stop the execution uh, when there is uh, an error okay if we we'll go back to the play section you, you can see that there are three buttons uh, we are most interested mainly in, on the play button just to play and run the, the application but next to it there is the pause uh, button the pause button will allow you to just 
post the the execution. Uh, it's not usual that uh, you are going to use the post button, but uh, you uh, have to know that exists. Usually, you won't be needing the the error post. Uh, you will get the uh, log error message here and you will uh, just debug from from that debug message okay next let's explore the project settings tabs to uh, to display the project settings tabs uh, my favorite way is uh, just pressing right here and you will be able to see the uh, in the project settings there are plenty of of sections and uh, right now mm, the most important ones that uh, we are going to uh, care would be uh, the player settings and the quality settings okay the player settings will allow you to um, just to set mm, some data about uh, your your uh, your project example you can set the, your company name the name of of this uh, project that you are developing some icons that would be used uh, for example in the in, in, in Google Play or Apple Store to represent your your application and uh, some uh, some things related to the resolution of of the application the splash image that uh, you can use when uh, running when uh, for running the, the game and these are uh, other uh, collection of settings that uh, will allow you to just um, activate or deactivate important uh, features uh, in order for you to get uh, the, um, the performance uh, that uh, you desire. The other section that uh, you must be aware is the quality section. The quality section will allow you to... Uh, th there are different uh, profiles of, of quality for different platforms. Okay, so for example, here we have three platforms, the three available that uh, right now that where uh, we can uh, deploy projects for. Uh, it, that means uh, desktop, uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, server, and Android. Uh, the, well, the, the, the usual ones would be uh, Windows and, and, and Android. And uh, by default, uh, you will see um, highlighted on green the, the profiles that uh, are going to uh, create when you are going to build. So right now, uh, if you are if if we build right now for for this, for a standalone for Windows, Mac, Linux, you will get uh, to use the ultra uh, profile. That means that uh, it's going to get the most uh, performance intensive uh, profile to to create the application. Uh, you will have to adjust uh, these uh, these profiles in order to for you to decide uh, what kind of profile do you want to use for for, for your project uh, to choose uh, your profile you just have to select here and um, just select the profile you want to use uh, for your project very high very low as you can see for for android uh, it's already selected to medium because usually you are going to get worse performance than than pc in in android Next, we are going to the project tab where uh, we are going to um, just explore uh, all the possibilities that we get there. So uh, right here, uh, we have seen that we can create uh, our folder structure that uh, we want. And in, in inside uh, the asset folder, we will be able to, uh, to place uh, both the scripts. For example, let's create our freestyle script. Okay. Create select C sharp script and just uh, name it my first script and by this way a, a C sharp uh, script uh, would have been created so we have our script let's add for example um, just uh, another folder let's call it resources and here we are going to create another folder uh, let's call it uh, 3d models 
and in this folder uh, we are going to place uh, for example 3d models uh, for example let's uh, we can create uh, 3d models uh, from taking uh, them from the screen for example if we click on the cube and drag it to the folder okay we would have created uh, what it's called a prefab okay uh, a prefab it's a it's a resource that uh, you can use in in runtime okay so mm, the code just imagine uh, our code will make reference to this specific uh, resource and it will be able to create instances of this resource to place them on the scene okay so mm, aside from scripts and 3d assets you will be able to add uh, images sounds and uh, well all the necessary stuff you need in order for uh, for you to develop uh, any application or game okay uh, more things uh, more tabs um, you can access uh, all the all the possible tabs going through uh, windows general and uh, here you will see all the possible the usual uh, tabs that uh, you are going to work with okay and uh, well there are many 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 other tabs in order for you to uh, get the performance uh, you need but in the case that you for for example you close uh, some some tabs some essential tabs for example and you want to recover them you can go back uh, through window general and recover uh, the closed tabs for example we have closed project and we have closed the hierarchy okay restored as i said before you can reorganize the whole layout in the way you feel most comfortable with there is not a, a unique solution it's it's up to you to decide what's uh, what's best uh, for you in order to to develop the, the application you you want my favorite uh, layout right now it is it is it is this one but uh, it's up to you to decide uh, what uh, what layout organization do you want to use okay let's move forward uh, doing some some examples and uh, what we are going to do is just to take uh, an image from internet and use it in in our project in order for uh, to do that uh, we are going to uh, uh, go to assets okay in, and uh, resources and in this folder for example you can press on the left click and select uh, showing explorer okay that will make uh, the, the explorer to appear and uh, here we are going to create a new folder for example a folder called images and now we can go out to to internet and look for any kind of image for example i am going to pick uh, this one okay this is uh, from one of my projects i am and i am going to place it in the project that I have created in the folder images okay and I place it here okay I have my image now I can go back to the to the unity editor and if, if I go back to the to the image folder the the image would have appeared okay and now well, we can we can use this image and we are going to use it in the cube we are going to take this image and drag it to the cube and this image would be applied to the cube okay this is the most basic example that you can do 
taking a resource from from the internet an image and applying it to a 3d model in this case this this cube okay if you happen to uh, to press play you have the cube with the uh, new texture of of your image okay next we are going to make a, a small exercise uh, about how to duplicate a, an existing game object on a scene and how to group them uh, first of all select uh, our 3d object okay the, our cube and you can press ctrl d to duplicate it or you can select left mouse button and select the option duplicate but it's faster if you just press ctrl ctrl d okay once you have duplicated several times the cube just uh, move each instance away from the original cube okay just you can see all the different cubes that you have created okay okay so right now what uh, the exercise that uh, we have done is just to duplicate an existing prefab uh, sorry an existing game object on a scene to create multiple ones good another uh, another interesting thing that we are going to do is just to group them uh, what means group them it means that uh, we are going to uh, place all these uh, these objects that we have created inside another uh, another game object okay so we are going to press left uh, mouse click uh, on the hierarchy and select the option create empty and we are going to name this game object group of cubes okay this is an empty game object that will well we will use it as a, as a container so right now we can select all, all our cubes okay and we can drag it inside this empty game object that will will work as a container okay so the good thing about uh, grouping the uh, all the all the game objects inside another one is that uh, if uh, we right now mm, modify the, uh, the, uh, the the container this is going to be applied to all the um, the game objects inside the this this container okay next exercise uh, we will do uh, it would be just to rename these cubes for example uh, we will call it cube one cube two cube Three. You can rename it any way you you want, but try to um, make sense. Uh, don't call them crazy things. Uh, just uh, something that uh, anyone can can understand. Because usually you will work as a part of uh, as a part of a team, and uh, your your colleagues need to know uh, what's going on. And uh, logical names help them uh, to to work. Okay, so uh, we have rename all all our cubes and uh, we can just play okay if we play okay you 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 should be able to see um, all the cubes if the camera is placed it in in the right position if the camera is not placed it in the right position just move the camera okay move the camera until you get to see all the cubes okay so we play and if everything is right you will be able to see all the cubes okay that's that's good okay now it's time to go for some script uh, code action um, in in the case that uh, you haven't already created the the folder scripts in in assets just create it okay now you have two options uh, for the f uh, for the script uh, we uh, previously created just uh, to rename it both in the name of the file and uh, later inside the file or we are going to go with uh, another option that is create another another script okay 
so we'll uh, press left mouse button and we will select create and C sharp script and we will call this script rotate 3d object okay as you can see in the in the inspector mm, there is uh, the actual content of of this script now it's time to open the, this script for for editing in order to open the, the easiest way is just to click two times to in into the, this file we click we click two times and automatically visual studio will uh, will start and it will display on the screen the script we have selected let's take a first look uh, into our first script okay so what do we have here this first section of here are um, some of the libraries uh, that uh, the script is is going to use for for example um, the the libraries that are not highlighted is because uh, nothing is uh, in the code is using them but uh, unity includes them because uh, they include most of the of the of the behaviors that uh, uh, while programming, uh, you are going in to need it. The the Unity Engine library is highlighted in in white. That means that it's being used. Uh, by who is being used? It's being used by Mono Behavior. Okay, that's why it's highlighted because it's being used by this component. Okay. Um, I don't know if uh, you have knowledge about uh, um, what means uh, a class. Okay, uh, class uh, it's uh, it's the most basic component of the object-oriented programming. About object-oriented programming, uh, I I I will redirect you to uh, resources uh, in order for you to better understand uh, this this whole concept. Okay, for the moment. Uh, we are going to just use the whole thing and uh, it, it would be up to you just to take a, a deeper look in, in better tutorials uh, where they explain a little bit better uh, how works uh, object-oriented programming just for for right now just uh, for you to know that um, this this script is using some functionality from 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 unity through what is called mono behavior okay and uh, thanks to this uh, functionality we are able to use uh, for example these two methods related to the methods again uh, i will redirect you uh, to uh, some uh, programming tutorials where they will explain better uh, the definition of the method function and all this uh, all this very basic stuff uh, for the moment just uh, for you to know that um, these methods are uh, provided by this this component and the function uh, these uh, two methods will do will be uh, what I am going to explain right now okay so the method start as uh, the automatic description included when uh, you created the script is called the first time you execute the program you will place all necessary instructions you need in the start just to initialize the whole thing just to work in the way you want the other method that it's included when the script is auto generated it is the update the update is called every time every time for each frame again the concept of frames i i will redirect you to better tutorials that will explain uh, what is a frame but uh, just try to understand that the frame is every time the the machine uh, goes through uh, one cycle and if you are uh, familiar with uh, video games uh, the frame rate uh, is something that uh, you can understand uh, because 
you you won't play uh, a game that it's uh, below uh, 60 frames per second in uh, in PlayStation 5 or Xbox uh, Siri Series X. So we are going to type our uh, first lines of code, okay? And uh, what I want you to type is uh, this code instruction, okay? So you just type it, okay? You can also copy and paste because uh, right now I am going to explain uh, what uh, this uh, line of code does. And this line of code, first of all, through the property this, you can access some of the components uh, of the existing game object. For example, the transform. When you type this, you are accessing the component transform. Okay, so later on we will add the script to uh, the cubes and when we type this dot transform, we will be accessing to the component transform. And from the component transform, we will be able to access to position, we will be able to access to rotation, and we will be uh, able to access to scale, local scale in this case. These are the three main elements of the transform, position, rotation, and scale. So what we have here is a way to access to all these properties. And what we are going to do is just modify these properties. Okay, so in this instruction, what we are doing is, first of all, accessing the transform, and transform offers, aside from that properties, offers a collection of, of functionalities. Okay, you can access to the whole collection just by uh, putting a dot and uh, an autocomplete uh, will be displayed and you will have access to all the uh, methods and functions and properties that transforms offers. Okay, in this particular case, uh, we are interested in the method of rotate. Okay, rotate. And the method rotate, if you uh, put the mouse uh, just uh, over the, the method, there will be a description of uh, what the method uh, rotate does. Basically, we are applying a rotation to, to the object. Okay, so we are uh, using this, this, uh, this method to, because we want to apply a rotation to a game object. Okay, so we need to complete the rotation with a parameter, okay? Um, you can see that the autocomplete uh, used to uh, display information about how many possible uh, calls offers the, the function, okay? Um, in, in the case of rotate, uh, it offers up to six, pos six possible combinations. We are interested right now, just the, the first one, that uh, we are only going to provide a, a, a 3D vector uh, with the degrees that we want to apply to the game object to rotate, okay? So we need uh, a vector 3 and we need to specify the degrees that we want that uh, to apply for each frame to the cube to the or to the 3d object so we want to apply for example in this example we want to apply uh, a rotation of uh, 25 degrees in the e-axis um, for each second so it's in each second uh, the our uh, game object will rotate in the e-axis 25 degrees but this function is going to be called every frame so we need a way uh, to calculate what fraction of the 25 degrees should be applied to uh, each frame. To get that information, we have uh, our uh, utility time. That uh, it, uh, it has utility that uh, it is offered by the, by the Unity engine. Okay, 
by uh, the library unit engine and uh, you, uh, time has multiple multiple properties multiple uh, methods but we are especially interested in the delta time what is the delta time the delta time is uh, the time that passes uh, that uh, it between two frames okay is the is the time between two frames and uh, th this time will allow us to apply uh, this rotation of 25 degrees for each second because uh, the time uh, for each frame uh, we will get that information from time delta time so we are good to go we have uh, our uh, our instruction that it's called it's accessing the transform it's calling to the rotate method and it's uh, telling it to rotate a um, amount of degrees in the e-axis okay uh, we can save our script and now we can go to the to the unity editor okay and now we can add uh, our script to uh, any of the cubes for example this one and there are two ways to add the script to to a game object one is just by uh, dragging the script to to the to the game object okay if we select now the game object it would have appeared the script added uh, as a component of the of the game object in the last position okay we have here our script rotate 3d object another way to add an, an script let's select another another game object is by clicking on add component and specifying the name of the script rotate 3d object two ways to add uh, a script to uh, uh, an existing game object okay so we have added uh, the scripts to two game elements so we are uh, we are good to go w we can play and these two cubes should uh, should rotate in the e axis 25 degrees uh, for each second okay so as you can see these two cubes are rotating this 20 25 degrees for each second so right now we have just completed the first uh, scripting test with unity so let's keep improving our script and in this case we are going to customize the uh, speed rotation of of each cube so let's go back to visual studio and we are at uh, we are going to add this line of code okay let's go back to visual studio and at the beginning of the class we are going to add this uh, variable okay let's explain what's going on here uh, this is a variable okay uh, I am not going to explain how the variables work uh, as I said uh, previously I will uh, redirect you to tutorials where uh, they will explain better uh, what is a variable okay but basically basically a variable it's a container of information that uh, you can use and in this case uh, this container of information uh, that we want to use uh, we want to use it to specify uh, the, the rotation we want to apply uh, to uh, to each cube okay so um, this rotation uh, is represented by a float number uh, again i i will uh, redirect you to tutorials uh, explaining the most basic types uh, like integer float double string but basically a float number is a number uh, that uh, can have decimals okay uh, here uh, we have to specify 25 that can be an integer but uh, you can specify decimals like this always finishing with with an f uh, so in order not to get a, a compilation error okay so if you are specifying some decimals just make sure that you are, you are specifying a, an F okay and the last thing we uh, we need to explain is uh, the attribute uh, public the attribute public uh, will allow uh, us to uh, customize uh, through the unity editor through the inspector uh, this value okay 
the the other thing that we need to do is okay now we have our data container that we will use to specify different uh, rotational speeds for each uh, for each rotating cube we are going to use that variable okay so um, where do we use it uh, just uh, think uh, a second about it where uh, how we can use it this variable okay good if you are uh, if you your response is uh, right here mm, is, is this the right one instead of a fixed 25 degrees we are going to uh, specify uh, what uh, this variable contains uh, right from from the start it's 25 but uh, we will customize this value in, in in the inspector so we can get different rotation speeds for uh, different cubes okay now uh, we can go back to the to the to the unity editor and let's finish adding uh, the the scripts to all the all the cubes okay let's add it all the scripts to all the cubes let's not miss anyone okay so i think that we have have it all okay so uh, this one is missing okay so if you have noticed now just in in the in the component in the script component in the rotate the object it has appeared something new okay it says rotation speed that is the public variable that we have defined here every time we define public we are offering this variable to the outside in this case uh, in this case to the unity editor okay and here we can customize the, uh, its value to any anything we want for example let's make it progressive uh, from s uh, from a slow to to fast so i am going to start here with uh, maybe 15 here uh, i have the duplicated the component here would be uh, for example 30 and uh, for example here would be 50 mm -mm, here 90 and here extremely fast maybe uh, 360 okay we have customized the rotation speed for each uh, different cube and now if we uh, if we run the example as you can see we have different speeds for each different cube in the case of the last one is rot is doing a whole rotation every second okay because 360 degrees is uh, is just one full one full rotation good now an exercise uh, i want you to, to apply uh, a custom movement okay to the position okay what you should do in the update is just to access to the transform to the position value i just increment the position at instance defined by uh, this public variable movement spin so what we are going what you are going to do is to declare uh, move uh, movement speed the same way that you have uh, declared public float rotation speed and uh, you are going to place uh, this uh, this line of code on your update the same way it was applied uh, the rotation and uh, what we will do here is just to increase the the position by a definite vector so please do it
okay if you have uh, done done it properly when you run the project aside from from the rotation you will see that the, the all the cubes are moving in different speeds Now, instead of uh, moving in the in the x-axis, because right now uh, we are moving the whole thing in the x-axis, let's choose another another axis. Let's let's uh, make them move. For example, in the z-axis. So we move from the x-axis to the z-axis, and let's try again. Let's play again and let's see what happened. Okay. As you can see, they are getting far, farther away at different speeds. Okay, another test. Let's move it on the E-axis. Okay, now we are going to move it on the E-axis. Let's make another test. We play it. And they are moving up at different speeds. Okay. Okay, we are, we are good. We have uh, we have made our second example. Uh, let's uh, summarize what we have done here. We have access to the transform, to the position, and we have increased the the position with a vector of a distance. Okay. Also, uh, if if it's clearer for you. Um, this operator that I was using right here, uh, it's um, uh, a short way to do exactly this. Uh, that means that uh, to the to the existing position is is assigned the value that it's uh, added from the existing po position plus the uh, step uh, he's going to do in in the direction. Okay, this is a way to make it shorter. Um, but if uh, if for the moment for you uh, you pr would prefer this this other way it's it would uh, either options are, are are good let's do one more test what we are going to do uh, right now we are going to add this the the, the script uh, the rotated 3d objects script to the whole uh, game object container okay so we are going to add the script the uh, rotate 3d object to the whole container okay we are going to keep uh, the speed to to zero in order uh, for not the whole object to uh, move away from us so uh, the, the what will happen is that it it will the whole group will rotate um, by itself let's make let's make it work and and you will see how okay okay right now the rotation uh, okay everything is is moving uh, is moving so let's uh, stop it uh, a little bit so what we are going to do is we are going to comment okay new lesson just to uh, mm, comment uh, code you have two options you can comment just a line of code with uh, two of uh, these symbols or you can comment a section of of code by using this to begin and this to end. The reason why we are commenting this is to um, have a more clear picture of what's going on. And what uh, what uh, we are interested to see is how the uh, this script is applied to every single uh, cube and also to the whole uh, game object group. Okay, so right now, if uh, we play the whole thing, Okay, we have two rotations. Let's, for example, let's take the scene. Maybe we can be, able, we will be able to see it better. Okay, let's move this a little bit. Okay, we have the scene here. With the scene, we are, we, we can move uh, like at the editor. And here we have the game tab where we, we will see what uh, is showing the, the game for real but in the in the in the scene we can also see what's what's going on okay we can also select elements and, uh, and 
well, you, we can see the properties on the inspector, how everything is changing on on the inspector. But remember that any change that you can do uh, right here, for example, uh, we can just uh, disable uh, some some objects, uh, is not kept. Uh, so when you stop the whole thing, if you have disabled uh, the mesh renderer, uh, this is not going to be uh, changed on the on the original code. So you are free to to do as many changes as as you want uh, right here. Okay, that uh, this uh, these changes uh, won't uh, won't change the original the original code. Okay, so for example, we have changed uh, this whole thing. For example, let's let's make it smaller. This one. like this and mm, if we stop the whole thing then as you can see nothing nothing has changed because the changes that we do during runtime are, are not stored and it, they don't change anything on the on the source material okay let's make another an, another action uh, right now just we are going to remove uh, scripts okay for example let's uh, let's take okay let's watch it right like this for example uh, for the last for this and this one we are going to remove uh, the the script to remove the script uh, you have to press uh, left uh, mouse and select the remove component and just like this you would have remove the component script from these two objects and when you run the whole thing you would be able to see that this uh, the, the the first and the last object they they are not rotating let's make it clear by removing the whole script right here and it will be easier to to see okay so the the whole container uh, doesn't have anymore the the rotate 3d object script and neither uh, the first element and the last element ha have the, that that uh, that script so they are just uh, static cubes the other uh, remaining three ones they have the rotate 3d object script and they are rotating to the speeds that uh, well are defined Okay, next. Next, we are going to introduce an error, but just uh, for you to know uh, how to detect an error and how to fix it. Let's let's make it simple. Uh, for example, let's imagine that um, in in vector three you specify another additional parameter. I don't know five. Vector three, it's it's um, it's a uh, it's a it's a value that has only three three values x y and z it doesn't have any more so it it is complaining and if you save and you go to the editor you will see on the console that it is reported an error on this specific line okay on the line uh, 19 and now if you if you click uh, two times in the error you will access uh, to the exact line where is the error and now you can fix the error save it and if you go back in the console it should it should have disappeared the compiling error okay this is the most basic way to detect uh, compilation problems and fix them a critical part of the project development is to know uh, when to use an existing solution. It's not about uh, reinventing the wheel again and again, but if there is an existing solution that we could use, uh, we should go for it in order to reduce the development time. Uh, in the Unity Asset Store, uh, you will find both uh, graphic resources as well as programming resources that will save you a lot of time in your project. So now let's go to the Unity Asset Store, okay? And uh, mm, you will create your own account. Uh, it's free to create an account and uh, just sign it, okay? 
and once you you are already there you can start uh, browsing any assets in the unity asset store you will fly uh, you'll find plenty of, uh, of resources uh, related to uh, game and application development um, let's check a, a little bit of, of the categories we have here let's put the screen like this let's move the browser here okay okay so the categories that uh, we have here we have uh, 3d assets uh, animations characters environment vegetation 2d assets uh, add-ons uh, audio essential templates um, everything you, you will find almost anything you might need uh, in order to complete uh, either your game or your uh, application um, you have to take into consideration that uh, especially augmented reality has grown uh, pretty huge uh, especially in the mobile uh, development area so mm, there are plenty of tools uh, especially in unity to 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 do that but uh, mm, if we are focusing ourselves in game development uh, well mm, assets that uh, may be useful uh, to you for example particle effect assets okay that's assets uh, assets that will allow you to just particle effects magic in this case auras these particle effects are a favorite of mine they are uh, especially great for funny small titles i have used in in my previous projects also uh, mobile resources for example this is one that it's pretty useful that allows you to have a, a, a debug a console uh, exactly the same information that you get here but inside the game this is especially useful when you have to run in the device and you need to get some uh, log uh, information you can use this tool it's free so mm, you have this tool that uh, it's helping quite a lot of people as you can see mm, five star review it's it's uh, like the like i said four years ago it's just perfect and uh, mm, what else uh, resources for networking okay uh, mirror is an a uh, network sdk that is it's free uh by the end of this course uh we will explore uh the, the programming with with mirror so mm, if you stay until the end uh, you will be able to program multiplayer games in mirror what else uh, photon is a widely uh, used and very very popular solution we also um, will uh, work with it but in this case uh, this is a paid uh, sdk so mm, you will have to make an investment in order to learn uh, how to program uh, network uh, games with photon but uh, i recommend uh, uh, for you to do this investment because um, most of the job applications that uh, you are going to to find uh related to uh, networking uh, they are going always to ask about photon the, so this is a uh, the only uh, investment that uh, you are going to need uh, in the whole in the whole course and it will be by the end of the course so mm, you have many 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 things uh, to learn for free before having to deal with uh, with photon what else uh, we have uh, tools related to uh, mm, image uh, processing recognition okay uh, OpenCV is uh, a popular uh, tool for for image uh, recognition here you can see an example of how this uh, this SDK is recognizing the placement of 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 the face of the humans okay 
um, resources for for video streaming okay there are plenty of, of resources uh, for video streaming uh, VR uh, with oculus quest uh, growing uh, in in the market uh, more and more tools uh, related to ease the development of of VR are, are available um, this is not a tool that uh, we are going to to uh, to study this is just for you to know that there are solutions out there that will save you a lot of time and and, and problems physics what what do we have here we have uh, physics re related to vehicles okay and uh, because mm, well uh, physics are a, a huge part of of the of the gaming and you need to know um, some basics related to to that R uh, tools what tools do we have uh, for example this is a tool i i purchased it and uh, well i needed to create uh, buildings and uh, this one is pretty uh, useful and easy to use and it it allowed me to create easily uh, some wide range of, of different buildings of course they are not going to be as beautiful as uh, the work that uh, a 3d artist could do but uh, if you if you don't have uh, anyone that can help you out in in making a, a house this asset is uh, is great okay let's let's make an example let's uh, let's import once uh, you have created uh, your account and uh, let's go uh, we are going to use our first um, library so um, we are going to get this one that it's called itwin that it's uh, made for uh, for animations to uh, to create animations okay uh, spinning, shaking, punching, moving, um, all these type of, of, of animations, okay? This type of animations. We are going to do a, a pretty basic example in order to understand that you can find uh, really good solutions on the Unity Asset Store that uh, they are uh, easy to use and uh, it, they will save you a lot of time. So uh, let's uh, start by opening the solution in Unity okay we are going to import the, the whole thing okay you will the itwin will be displayed in the package manager the package manager is the the manager that uh, will allow you to manage all the installed packages in your project okay so what we are going to do is just to make sure that we have the latest version okay and we are going to press import okay and here are the description of the folders that will be created on on the asset folder uh, and once imported we, we would be able to uh, use this uh, this functionality okay so um, let's go back to the code and we are going to add uh, this instruction line in the start because uh, what we want is just to um, call it once when we first run the game okay so uh, i am going to explain uh, what we are doing here okay so we are calling the library itwin and the library itwin if i press if I type I twin uh, and press dot we will see all the available methods that offer this library okay things like color from color to audio from audio to um, fade from fade to and what we are especially interested is move to move to as the description reads, changes a game object's uh, position over the time to a supplied destination with uh, a minimum customization options. Basically, we are moving uh, uh, the specified game object 
to a target with some parameters. So mm, we are going in, we are going to f uh, to fill uh, to specify that parameters. The first parameter is the got the game object where this animation is going to be applied. In th in this case, is uh, the the game object that is uh, attached to to this script. Okay, so to access the game object attached to this script, we have the option to specify this and game object, and just like this we have uh, referenced to the game object that is attached to this script okay and uh, what came right here is uh, a collection of arguments okay that will specify uh, the destination the way that it's going to reach the destination the time it's going to take to reach the destination and um, there are plenty of possibilities that uh, I, I will let you uh, to explore um, what else uh, this library can offer but f for the moment we are going to keep it uh, easy keep it simple and uh, we are just going to um, just to modify the the property position from the game object okay and we are going to specify a new position this new position is we are taking the the current position through uh, this uh, this property that we have previously seen uh, before remember we are taking the current position and we are adding a shift to the next position in this case we are uh, we are adding a shift in the x axis and z axis okay this is the target position where this object is going to go the is type uh, is uh, meaning um, the way it's going to go there okay so it's going to uh, make an uh, an animation of is out back um, i will let you explore these uh, types of animations uh, in order for you to um, well just to practice and uh, to see what's going on and the most uh, one of the most important ones would be the time that it takes uh, to the whole animation to go from the, the initial position where the object is to the final position where the where the object is so we are ready to to run the, the application we go to the unity editor and if we we play the the animation if we play the the scene as you can see, the three cubes where uh, our script uh, rot rotate 3D object uh, were still attached, they have moved to uh, the position we have specified. Okay, let's uh, let's make it again with uh, maybe with the scene. Okay, right here. Let's move this right here, so we will have a better picture of what's going on. Uh, we are going to run again and as you can see this is the shift they have done and I don't know if you could if you can appreciate about the the bounce they have made when they have arrived to this position let's let's make make it again and to see if it's more visible like this so I don't know if you have uh, been able to appreciate it, but uh, uh, once they have reached the position, they have bounced it. That wha is what I meant with the option of easy type, is out back. This uh, is out back is related to um, be being able to do this kind of uh, of animations. Okay, okay. Now um, an exercise. I, w I want you that uh, to create uh, public uh, public variables that you can customize through the unity editor in order to um, well specify uh, well mm, uh, the a custom target position to go and a custom time uh, to use to go to to that position so mm, please uh, go ahead and make it customizable
Okay, if uh, if you have uh, defined um, the necessary public uh, variable members that allow you to customize both the the destination and the time, you should be able to um, set uh, to customize each uh, independent cube and to set um, a different target and different times for for each uh, each target. Let's see. Let's change it a little bit right here. The time. For example, and if you run it, you have it that they are going to they are going in different directions. This one has run away too fast. Maybe if we try again to run it again, okay. As you can see, they are moving with different targets okay and uh, what what we have done in the code is just to um well we have declared a public uh, vector 3 where uh, we will we would be able to specify the the shift to the target position that we wanted to apply okay so for each uh, for each uh, independent cube that uh, that has the rotate 3d object we apply it different shift and with, with different times to arrive to uh, that target okay so the solution was like this other places where uh, it's possible to find resources aside from the unity asset store uh, would be in places like uh, like uh, GitHub. Okay, let's open the browser. Okay, where you would be able to find uh, resources. Right here, I have some of my uh, repositories, um, the public ones and the learning ones. Um, you would be able to find them uh, here. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, GitLab is another uh, another place where uh, you can find um, open source uh, projects. Okay, plenty of ones, and also Bitbucket. In Bitbucket, you will also find plenty of of resources, uh, programming resources in this case to to help you out in in your projects. The last thing that we are going to do is uh, right now we are going to um, just to run a, a project of what you can expect uh, when you finish, uh, when you complete uh, successfully this course. What we are going to do is uh, we are going to uh, run a, multi a local multiplayer project. Okay. And uh, in this project, uh, mm, there are all the elements that uh, you are going to see uh, for the whole course. Uh, things like uh, play and animation, classes, uh, multiplayer with uh, mirror, with photon, and uh, plenty of things. But it's only about that you get a clear picture of uh, what you can get from, from this course when you complete it. So mm, what we are going to do right now is uh, just to download uh, this uh, this uh, this package, this uh, zip file. Okay. So you access to this zip file, you download it, you proceed to extract it. Okay, respecting the folder structure. If everything is right, the folder structure must be like that, and you are going to uh, to copy uh, copy and paste the whole project into a new one, because we are going to test the multiplayer directly. Okay. Okay, and you rename the, the new instance with a different name, so you can uh, differentiate from, from the other one. For example, 8 bricks client 1. Okay, 
and uh, now it's uh, it's time to open both uh, unity uh, both unity projects we are going to open two unity editor instances um, uh, i have already done uh, opening the, the this these two projects so we are going to open these two projects we are on press the add button and select the first one and open it okay once we have opened it uh, we have to make sure that uh, we have opened the, the this scene uh, that is in this path okay so we go to 8 bricks defense game in game scenes menu game scene okay we have our scene open and now we are going to open the other uh, copy okay we are going to add we go to another copy we open it okay and we are going to place it uh, i hope that you are working with two screens uh, that, that will help, help you out not only to follow uh, this course because this course is meant to be uh, done uh, with two screens in one screen you have uh, the whole video with uh, the right resolution and in the other uh, you are able to to work to code to use the uh, unity editor anything you need uh, to complete the course so right now i am working with two, two screens and i am going to open the the other unity editor instance and i am going to place it in the my second screen also we we make sure that uh, it's uh, we are on the right scene okay in game scenes menu scene okay so now that we are in in the right scene let's run uh, the game we are going to run the game uh, locally with mirror okay uh, in the code there is also code related to photon but um, we are going to do the, this first test in, in with uh, with mirror okay we are going to create a game for two players okay we are going to select the br for example and now we can run the second player okay the first player is now creating the the multiplayer room and now i am joining win with the second player the second player will look for the multiplayer room that the first one uh, has created and right now both players are inside the game okay as you can see in one screen um, one player is is moving the animation of the player is moving and you can see this these little guys that well you can shoot and if we are lucky i am i will be able to uh, kill one of these and there it's it's dead okay the, basically this is a tower defense game okay that uh, it's uh, it's meant to be played uh, well just defending your your tower okay and uh, yes uh, it's a multiplayer game and it, with uh, multiple enemies, multiple animations, um, multiple features that uh, we would be able to explore uh, during the course. And uh, yeah, uh, for today, uh, that's it.